Now make this quick list and I'm going to finish. Number one, for us to really count on the future and to count on each other, here's a good list. Number one, morality, doing what's right. With Herbalife's marketing now and these incredible products we have, you know, doing it right is going to be so easy, there's going to be no reason for doing it wrong. There's no reason for making promises we can't fulfill. Here's what I learned early in my career. Always remember whoever you're working with, this is what you want to occur later, that they found out it was easier than you said and that it was more than you promised. Here's the key, better understated than overstated. When I wrote my first book, Seasons of Life, the picture in that book was really not the most flattering picture. And when some saw that picture, they said, Mr. Owen, surely you could have found a little better picture to put in that book. I said, no, this one is fine, so that when I show up, I look better than the picture. <laughs> That's better than using the glamour picture, right? And then when you show up, you look a little older. <laughs> Here's what, what's next in the vocabulary for leadership for our future. Make these notes now. Next is truth. To deal in truth, we're going to speak the truth. We want to build on truth, what is right. Here's what's next. Responsibility. Accepting responsibility. If we want the fortune, we must also accept the responsibility that goes with building it. Then the responsibility of what to do with it. Next is courage. Courage is that unique quality Mark had after he conducted his first meeting and everybody said, we're not interested. Here's what he needed at that moment, courage, to do the second meeting. And at the second meeting, someone said yes. Your courage will be rewarded. There's no better place to place it than here. When you're discouraged with three in a row who say no, just remember, let your courage now show to talk to the next three. Because out of the next three, one may be the person that helps you become wealthy and rich. Public courage private courage, the courage when no one's around, when you make those resolves and decide for yourself you're going to do something, make some changes, whatever. Courage of thought. Here's an excellent one, courage to change. I have to work on this one. Courage to be silent when it would be better to listen than to talk. Here's a big one. Courage to forgive. Here's an important one. Courage to compromise. You give a little, I'll give a little. Somehow we'll work it out. That's what Marcus and Alan had to do back in those earlier days. A bit of compromise with each other to make it work. They're still working on it. <laughs> Here's the next one, courage to risk. That's what life really is all about. Not an undue risk, but risk. If you want the harvest in the spring, you must risk the seed into the soil. And, or the harvest in the fall, you must risk in the spring the seed to sow. You've got to risk some of your time. My grandkids ask me every time, and my family, why would you go spend the day with those people in Hawaii rather than spending the day with us? I've got to give them some excellent reasons. And then when I see them shortly, they will ask me, was it worth it to go spend the day with them and not with us? So how I ration out my time and how you ration out your time is so important. Have the courage to make those wise decisions. Now my family knows that a big part of my life now, of course, is herbal life. And they love the stories. And when I say to them, 
I had a chance in Maui to make a deposit of my own personal experience into the lives of so many incredible leaders from Herbalife around the world that maybe, just maybe, that experience I had depositing my experience into the thoughts and consciousness of all of you, no telling what kind of miracles that may work. And when I get through sharing with my family this opportunity I had to speak to you today, they say, yes, Grandpa, yes, Papa, it was worth it for you to go to Maui and be with the Herbalife family. Here's the next part of the list. Keep your word. What you promise, make sure you fulfill. When I leave on a trip, home office, hopefully, sleeps well at night. When Jim Rohn's in India, when Jim Rohn is in South Africa, when Jim Rohn is in Europe, hopefully they sleep well not pacing the floor, wondered if I've shown up. I wanted Mark to have the feeling, as long as Jim Rohn's there, everything's going to be okay. We all should earn that kind of reputation. As long as you're there, it's going to be okay. If it's in your hands, it's in good hands. That's the key. Next, admit your mistakes. Sometimes you've got to admit them publicly. Sometimes you've got to admit them to each other. Here's the big one, to admit them to yourself. And then here's sometimes, this could be some of the greatest new beginnings is when you say, I'm sorry. It's a chance to start all over. Next is dignity. Heart and soul. If we were going to use a model for some of these words, it would be Mark Hughes. He had the dignity. He had the heart and soul. Next is faith. Faith in God, faith in others, faith in your family. A big one is faith in yourself. Here's one we all knew Mark for, class of spirit, class of manners. Class that understands position, place. Here's a unique one, a touch of humility. The rich must be taught not to be arrogant. The poor must be taught not to be cynical. Some other basics to remember that I used when I was building my organization. Here's a good one. Manage as you build and build as you manage. It doesn't take but a short conversation to find out some people's problems. They have stopped building and started managing. But the key here says, build as you manage and manage as you build. It probably wouldn't be too far wrong to use the old 80-20 rule here. Spend 80% of your time building and 20% of your time managing what you build. But it's easy to get the wrong numbers here and spend... 20% of your time building and 80% of your time managing. What made me one of the world's best recruiters? Here was my time management in recruiting when I built my own organization. I spent about 75% of my time recruiting and 25% of my time training. It is easy to get the opposite numbers going and spend 25% of your time recruiting and 75% of your time training. Guess what pays the biggest money? Recruiting. Talking to the next person. Talk to the next person. Talk to the person across the street. I shared this with Alan yesterday or today. When we opened India, someone asked me, should I go to India? And I said, if you walk out your front door and look down the street and there's no cars and no people, and you walk over one more street and look up and down the street and there's no cars and no people, you should go to India. <laughs> let me give you... 
Let me give you Mark's philosophy, and it, it is one of the best. Mark recruited first line at home, and he built down line out of town. He never recruited, personally recruited, outside of Southern California. He didn't go to Denver to recruit. He didn't go to Dallas to recruit. Right? He didn't go to another country to recruit. He recruited all of the people he personally recruited were within his scope, where he was. Now, if somebody in Los Angeles knew somebody in Denver and they got it going and got it started, then Mark made his trip to Denver, but not to recruit, only to advance the business. What a unique philosophy. And here's some of the wrap-up now. The philosophy that makes network marketing, herbal lifestyle really fly. Number one, as many customers as possible to represent each distributor. And as many distributors as possible to represent each supervisor volume. Next. This one helped save my life. Work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. Follow the example of life itself. Life was not designed for us to get what we need. Life was designed for us to get what we deserve. You don't receive a harvest because you need one. You receive a harvest because you planted one in the spring. And then here's one more, and I'm finishing. I got about 12 of these finishes. <laughs> this one really did it for me now. Here it is. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. That helped to change my network marketing career. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Now, if you were Anthony Powell, maybe you could carry one. Uh, maybe two, if they were small persons. But as big as he is, difficult to carry three. So have you got that one now? You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Here's one of the things I learned that built my business. Put people on their own, give people responsibility, show them how to do their own thing as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible. Accept the responsibility for their own sales, accept the responsibility for their own customers, accept responsibility for building their own organization quickly, quickly. Yes, we lend a hand. Yes, they attend our meetings. Yes, they come to our training but as quick as possible put people on their own. It's what network marketing, it's what being in business for yourself is really all about. But it's easy to get trapped into spending too much time just helping or letting two or three climb on your back, use up all of your energy and time, and you have no more energy left for the thousand you could help.